Welcome to the lecture going over question one from the chapter 10 homework. Uh, we are going to go over question one from the textbook in this PowerPoint. Be sure to download the worksheet from the link below. It'll be good practice for you to go through the six step process every time we do hypothesis testing. The whole six step process is on the right hand side of the screen. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, a sample of 36 observations is selected from a normal population. The sample mean is 49 and the population standard deviation is 5. Conduct the following test of hypotheses using the 0.05 significance level. The null hypothesis is mu equals 50 and the alternative hypothesis is mu is not equal to 50. The first step is to take is to state the null and alternative hypothesis. The problem uh, actually already gives it to us, so we don't need to actually write any more about that. However, we need to make sure that we understand what it says. The null hypothesis says that the sample mean is equal to the population. In other words, there's no difference between the sample and the population. The alternative hypothesis says the sample mean is not equal to the population. In other words, uh, there is a significant difference between the sample and the population. So let's take a look at the normal distribution below. Remember, the normal distribution represents the distribution of the population. This population has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5. The distribution below does not say anything yet about the sample. Because we see the not equals to sign in the alternative hypothesis, we know that this two-tailed that this is a two-tailed test. So, in other words, the regions of rejection, uh, rejecting the null hypothesis, are going to be on both sides of the distribution. As you see in the um, distribution, the shaded areas of green are the areas of rejection. Um, the other lines represent the critical values. We'll be discussing the critical values in step four. So let's go ahead and draw these distributions now um, on your worksheet. So now we can move to step six and make sure that you note, uh, write the null and alternative hypothesis on your worksheet as well. So step two, what is the level of significance? This one is really easy and very straightforward. The question literally gives us the level of significance um, which equals 0.05. Um, don't forget though, sometimes it'll say it in other words, such as, what is the probability of committing type one error? The probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. The probability of um, calculating a Z value uh, randomly occurring in the region of rejection uh, or the alpha level or the level of risk. So all of these terms are saying the exact same thing. Um, all these terms are saying the exact same thing. So let's label the region of rejection of the null hypothesis with an alpha of 0.05. Remember that because we have a two-tailed test, the alpha of 0.05 is split between two tails. So the probability of rejection because the calculated test statistic is above the critical value is 0.025, and the probability of rejection because the calculated statistic is below the lower critical value is also 0.025. When you add the probabilities of both of these rejection regions, um, the total area of probability of rejection is 0.05. So now we can move on to step three. We are now in step three. What is the test statistic and why? When conducting a hypothesis test with a continuous variable that is normally distributed, there are two test statistics that we will be considering. The first test statistic is a Z statistic. We'll, uh, we will use a Z statistic if we know the population standard deviation. The second is a T statistic. We will use a T statistic if we only know the sample standard deviation. In the present situation, we do know the population standard deviation. Notice it says population standard deviation is 5. So we should use the Z statistic. Know that we... Uh, now that we know that we are using a Z statistic, we can move on to step four. Step four is the decision rule. When we conduct the null hypothesis test, before we ever collect any data, we need to determine and state the critical value and the decision rule. This is good practice because if you state this beforehand, you're able to objectively make a decision based on whether or not it meets the criteria of your decision rule. If you decide afterwards, it can be difficult to not demonstrate bias when making your decision. We're going to refer to the uh, critical value here as Z crit. 
Uh, Z crit um, is the Z value that serves as a separating point between the region of rejection of rejecting the null hypothesis or failing to reject the null hypothesis. The critical value is based on three things in this test. First, whether the test is one-tailed or two-tailed. If it's one-tailed, the critical value will be a little less extreme on one uh, side because all 5% of the probability of rejection will be in just that one tail. Uh, but we have a two-tailed test. If, if it is a two-tailed test, the region of rejection will be split between two sides. Um, be split evenly between both sides. It will cause the critical value on either side to be a little bit more extreme. Second, the alpha level is actually is the actual probability of rejection. So you notice we have an alpha of 0.05. The alpha of 0.05 um, is uh, the probability of rejection in this two-tailed test. So if you look at the Z table, uh, the Z value that corresponds with the probability of 0.05 would be the Z critical value of a one-tailed test. And notice I put 0.05 right there. That would be a Z value of negative 1.645. Because we have a two-tailed test, we need to find the z value that corresponds uh, with 0 0.025. Notice I highlighted 0 0.025. Um, and so the z value is at the intersection of negative 1.9 and 0 0.06. Um, on the lower tail, and um, so what this is telling us is that the z value um, the Z critical value is negative 1.96 on the lower tail and 1.96 on the upper tail. So let's move the Z chart out of the way and write the critical values on the distribution. The critical values are negative 1.96 on the lower tail and positive 1.96 on the upper tail. Remember the, the rejection area is everything in the shaded area in green. The area where we would fail to reject the null hypothesis is not shaded. So that middle area is the area where we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now that we've labeled the Z critical values, we can write the decision rule. Here's the decision rule. We reject the null hypothesis if Z calc is less than negative 1.96 or if uh, 1.96 is less than uh, Z calc. So notice it says uh, it's got the white arrows right there. It's on the outside of the critical values. Fail to reject the null hypothesis if um, what negative 1.96 is less than or equal to Z calc, or if uh, Z calc is less than or equal to positive 1.96. And once again, notice that the um, fail to reject uh, includes the critical values. And so if it is on a critical value, if your Z calc is on a critical value, you are going to fail to reject the null uh, hypothesis. Um, so now we're on to step five. And you've noticed I've used the term Z calc. And once again, Z calc uh, is the calculated value of the sample mean compared to the population mean. Um, in step five, we're going to be making a decision. In order to do that, we need to compare the values of Z calculated to the value of Z critical. Okay. We need to use the formula, the Z formula, to calculate Z calc. Right here is the formula for Z calc. That is the sample mean, X bar, uh, minus the population mean, mu, divided by the population standard deviation, lowercase sigma, divided by the square root of the number in the sample, lowercase n. Uh, so that is the formula to calculate Z calc. Okay. So in the problem above, we can see 49. Uh, is the sample mean, 50 is the population mean, 5 is the standard deviation, and 36 is the number in the sample. Uh, when we calculate the quotient of this formula, the value of the z-score of the sample mean in relation to the population mean is 1.2. So you notice I put 1.2 on my distribution, um, and we're going to now compare z-calc to z-crit. So the next, um, and you notice Z calc uh, compared to Z crit, uh, Z calc is lower than Z crit, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. Okay, so all that we calculated now was just the value of the test statistic. Now the next question asks, what is the p-value? Remember the p-value can be found by using the Z table. If we look for the Z value of 1.2, 
uh, in the right hand column we see the z value of negative 1.2 towards the bottom. This particular z table gives us the probability, so this right here, uh, if we look at the z value of 1.2 in the right hand column we'll see a z value of negative 1.2 um, towards the bottom. Uh, this particular z table gives us the probability of observation of uh, observation or mean of a group occurring uh, below a negative z value by chance. Because a normal distribution is symmetrical, we can also use this chart as the probability of an observation or mean of a group occurring above a positive z value by chance. So this value of 0.1151 corresponds with a z value of negative 1.2. Okay. Um, Negative 1.2 is telling us that the probability of this observation occurring by chance is uh, 0.1151 or about 1 or about 11.51%. Uh, percent. But remember that we have a two-tailed test. Uh, and what I put up here on the screen is um, what we have to do because we have a two-tailed test. So the probability, um, we have to multiply that probability by 2. Uh, so the probability of observing the z-calculated value of 1.2 or more, uh, 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 the probability of observing the z-calculated value of 1.2 or more extreme is 0.1151 multiplied by 2, or the probability is 0.2302. Um, so in other words, there is a 23.02% chance of this value occurring just by chance. So now we're going to compare the z-critical value to the z-calculated value. So we've got the p-value at the bottom, and now we're going to compare the z-crit to the z-calc. Um, the z-calculated value is less extreme. The z-calculated value is less extreme than either of the z-critical values. So we failed to reject the null hypothesis and note that we do not have enough evidence to state that the sample is different from the hypothesis. We're not saying that the sample is the same as the population. Uh, all that we're saying is that we don't have enough evidence to say that it's different. So this brings us to step six. In step six, we're going to interpret our results. Think about trying to tell someone who uh, tell someone what you discovered, uh, but they don't know much about statistics. You have to explain it to them very simply and straightforward. Here's what we're going to say. The sample average <clears throat> uh, was one less than the population average. There is a 23% chance that this could have happened completely by chance. Because of that, we are not able to say that this sample is actually different from the population. We may need a bigger sample size in order to truly see if the sample is different. I do, not, uh, I do want to point out one more really important point. In null hypothesis testing, in null hypothesis testing, um, we always use the test statistic to test hypotheses. In this case, the test statistic is a z statistic. We compared z calc to z crit. Z calc was not as extreme as z crit, so we failed to reject the null hypothesis. However, there is one more measure that you can look at. That's the alpha level compared to the p level. Notice the p value of 0.2302 compared to the alpha of 0.05. If the p-value is less than the alpha value, we'll reject the null hypothesis. In this example, because the p-value is equal to or greater than the alpha level, um, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. A p-value is the most widely used metric of statistical um, in order to interpret statistical significance. It is imperative uh, to thoroughly understand what a p-value is. A good phrase to remember is... If P is low, reject HO. Uh, well, that, once again, is if P is low, reject HO. So, in other words, if the probability of a test, uh, statistic, if the probability of a test statistic occurring randomly uh, by chance is really low, you are probably going to reject the null hypothesis. I would encourage you to watch the video on p-values if you want more information about that. Well, that's all for this problem, and I hope that this was beneficial to you, and I look forward to you all watching more videos. Thank you so much.